Hello, my name is Tema, and today I'll be doing a video for the Teach to Learn Foundation Integrated Algebra Series on Pythagorean Theorem. The Pythagorean Theorem is basically just um, a way to figure out the side lengths of a right triangle. Now, just to start off, a right triangle is any triangle that has one right angle. A uh, triangle can only have one right angle because a right angle in itself, the definition of a right angle, is an angle which is 90 degrees. A 90 degree angle looks like this. It makes a perfect square, like so. Um, so a triangle can only have one 90 degree angle because the total measure of any triangle is 180 degrees. So if it had more than that, uh, it wouldn't add up correctly to 180 degrees. So any triangle can only have one right angle. And if a triangle has a right angle, such as this one, then you can calculate its side lengths using the Pythagorean theorem. If you know that this side is three units long, this side is four units long, then you know how long this side is, and I'll tell you how. The Pythagorean theorem is an equation. All you have to do is a squared plus b squared equals c squared. In this case, a and b are representative of the legs of the triangle, and C is representative of the hypotenuse of the triangle. The hypotenuse is the longest side of the triangle, and it is opposite the right angle, always. And the legs are the other two sides. So you plug in, into this equation, uh, the pieces of information that you have. So if, you, if the equation is a squared plus b squared equals c squared, and you have the two sides, because you know that a is a leg, b is a leg, and C is a hypotenuse, and if you know this is the hypotenuse, let's label that, let's put the height, uh, this is the leg, and this is another leg, then you can plug this into the equation and solve for the length of the hypotenuse. So if the length, going back to this example, of one leg is three, then you plug it in for one of the leg values, it doesn't matter which one. So 3 squared plus the other leg squared, which is 4, equals c squared. Now, how do you solve this equation? Now you just the 3 squared plus 4 squared equals c squared. That doesn't really tell you much, but it does. Because you can solve for c by figuring out the sum of these two numbers. 3 squared is 3 times 3, because any number squared, just as a reminder, is that number times itself. So 3 times 3 is 9. So 3 squared is 9. So now we are at 9 plus 4 squared. And 4 squared is 4 times 4, likewise, and is 16. So we are at 9 plus 16 equals c squared. And 9 plus 16 equals 25. So 25 equals c squared. Now, 25 equals c squared. How do you figure out, how do you figure that out? All you have is 25 equals c squared. That still doesn't tell you the length of the hypotenuse. What you have to do is to do the opposite of squared to isolate the variable c, right? So the opposite of squared is square rooting. You find the square root. This can be done on any uh, regular calculator, uh, scientific calculators. Um, some just basic ones will have a uh, square root function as well. But um, or if you just have it memorized. So the square root of 25 is 5. And the square root of c squared is c. Because c times c equals c squared. But c squared divided by... Uh, but the, I mean the square root, sorry. The square root of uh, c squared is c. So? That's how you would solve for the length of the hypotenuse. It's 5. Now, if you had the lengths of, um, if you had the lengths of the hypotenuse and the leg, it would be the same equation. Okay? So what you would do is, let's get rid of these values. Let's say that um, the hypotenuse's length is 10. And the this leg's length is 8. 
Then all you have to do is just use the Pythagorean theorem again. So you do a squared, which because this leg is eight, so that's eight squared plus, well, you don't know the other leg, so you leave it as a variable, b squared, equals c, the hypotenuse, 10 squared. So eight squared plus b squared equals 10 squared. And again, you're going to multiply a times eight, get 64. So 64 plus b squared equals 10 squared. And 10 squared, 10 times 10 equals 100. So 64 plus b squared equals 100. But still, that doesn't give you your answer. So what you have to do is solve for b. You do this by isolating the variable. You subtract 64 from both sides, get the b squared alone. So that ends up being b squared equals 36. And then you're back where you were with the last problem. b squared equals 36, you divide, you have square root 36 and square root b, and you get b equals 6. So the lengths of the triangle are 6, 8, and 10. Um, another interesting thing to note about solving for the sides of right triangles is that um, if you notice that the sides are in any proportion of 3, 4, 5, then you can just follow that proportion because, uh, for example, from the first one, this side was, I mean, this isn't on a scale, but this side was 3, 4, 5, right? So that's a 3, 4, 5 right triangle. That proportion will always hold true to all 3, 4, 5 right triangles. For example, 3 to 4 to 5 equals uh, 9 to 12 to 15. And if you put that into the Pythagorean theorem, it'll be 81 plus 144 equals 225. And that'll end up with 225 equals 225. So that's just another uh, trick for finding the lengths of right triangles, which, remember, are triangles with an angle of 90 degrees. Okay, thank you.